Hello, everybody, and welcome back to East Memories of Salsetta. Well, we made it to Komodo Village. Komodo Village was attacked, so we're gonna have to go actually do any something about that. Okay, Saisen's shop. This is where we get accessories. We're not going to get some quite yet. The first thing we're going to do is invest in us not dying. Yep, that's the sword the Komodo Warriors are actually shown using. And we'll get some more punch gloves. And we don't have enough money for armor for everyone, so we're going to have to fix that. I saw a bunch of this old stuff. And it doesn't give us enough. Well, looks like we're going to have to sell our gold ingot. Well, I don't do much enhancing in this early part of the game. So I can uh, dump the uh, gold guilt-free, basically. Okay, that's our equipment taken care of. Now let's get moving. Oh, right. They're gonna make me do that. Yeah, we have to stop them from causing any more mischief. Lady, welcome to Adol's world. Okay, we don't need to talk to anyone there. Keep rolling, rolling, and rolling. These are the people we need to talk to. By the way, I like how each sword that Adol like, gets has a different uh, sheath. Ah, oh, this again. Yeah. I don't care if it doesn't help, it makes me feel better. Well, not the whole night. Wait, did we? We might have. Yeah, that's our next dungeon. Yeah, the whole crater thing near Komodo Village is actually taken from Mask of the Sun.
Hello! Okay, that's the Karna I remember doing things on her own. That one, uh, Karna. <laughs> ah, well, you're joining the party anyway. Welcome aboard! I knew you'd come around. Alright. Well, I've already bought all the stuff that I wanted to, I think. Okay. Karna does piercing damage. So we now have all of our damage types covered. And she comes equipped with the latest stuff. So now we go to the accessory shop. Let's see. We're gonna buy some of these. Okay, so Karna is a ranged attacker. And we're going to equip her with the shield ring too, because she's not the most durable member of the party. Yeah, her base attack stat at least is a bit lower than uh, most people we're going to be getting. But she develops some incredibly powerful skills. Like, I would bring Karna even if her only skill was Napalm Shot. So, we're not actually going to be able to do much exploring for the moment. Ooh, hey, an emerald. Because Karna is going to turn us away from any route that doesn't lead us to the ancient borough. By the way, in between uh, the last video and this one, I actually went back to my old player file and defeated the optional uh, super boost uh, in the Forest of Dawn. So we're actually going to be doing that in this playthrough. And I'm not going to do it better when I actually record it so we're not stuck here for like, oh, like 15 minutes on one enemy.
And we open up this shortcut. Okay, I have a good idea of how to get there now. I mean, I should. I have beaten this game. I'm going to admit it. Playable Kong is probably the big thing that sold me on the this version of the East 4. Because Carnival is kind of a departure from uh, previous female characters in the East series in that she actually went out and got her hands dirty personally. Both in uh, Dawn of East and in Mask of the Sun. And it was unusual at the, yet to have a character that wasn't swooning over at all because even Elena did that a little when it in Wanderers and just fit in uh, Oath and Felgana. But as always, my memory can be a little bit fuzzy about these sorts of things. Okay, I was completely wrong. Bear with me, folks. I'll figure out this whole video game thing eventually. about East is that uh, it's kind of replaced the uh, whole uh, Zelda series for me, and not just because uh, Zelda is like unavailable or, or anything, there are still a bunch of uh, Zelda games I haven't played that I can play legitimately, but at some point I just, you know, gave it up even though I played it a ton when I still uh, had you know, stuff like the uh, NES and SNES. I'm not going to say, uh, the 3D Zelda games are, like, worse than the 2D uh, Zelda games or anything. But I did give the 3D ones a try, and it just didn't happen. Whereas I pretty much immediately bought into the 3D East games with Ark and Mikishtim. I think Arkham Mephiston was the first East game I actually bought myself. No, in fact, I've bought it twice. I'm an enemy of the uh, exploration focused games either. I mean, I own La Moana.
Okay, so Karna is full of poison, and I'm heading down all the way this way because there is a memory down here. And memories have the same effect as save points. Uh, wait, not save points, a uh, monument. Fast travel points! They have the same effect as bonfires. They completely heal you and remove all your status ailments. Okay, so Karna is strong against uh, flying enemies, uh, so we're going to be seeing excellent kill pop up a lot. For each damage type available to your parties, there are two characters that can fill it. Adol and Frida both do slashing, uh, Durin and Kalilika both do bashing damage, and Karna and Ozma both do thrusting damage. And Karna's down. I tried too hard. I don't mind the idea of uh, having to sometimes match damage types to uh, enemies, because it's a lot less cumbersome in this game than it is in, say, like, uh, Crystallis. Don't bring the up that again, Dad all. Mm-hmm. And so Adol leaves to do East 1 and 2. One of the things uh, I would like to see from Falcom at some point is one of Adol's adventures at the back end of his career. Because it's not like uh, there are Japanese uh, companies that are afraid of having older main protagonists. I mean, uh, in the latest Yakuza game, uh, Kiryu is like pushing 50. So I'd like to have see uh, some East game that's like from that part of Adol's life. Maybe I'm just thinking about it because uh, the Yakuza series actually ages Kiryu in real time. We're just gonna poke around here a little bit. There might be something interesting down this way. I won't say it never hurts to explore, because frankly, it can hurt to explore quite a lot! 
because even though this is a recent East game, this is still an East game. One of the things I always like to point out about uh, Falcom is that they are basically a PC game developer that got started in the 80s, and they never really quite stopped being that. It's full of bugs. Oh, the masked men. Odds are not great. Okay, fighting the masked men. We'll have to do this sort of thing a few times. And the masked men are always tough opponents. They will completely wreck you if you try to like get them head to head unless you're really good at blocking. However, they do give loads of experience. And I just got arrowed. And that's that. Neither do the rest of us. Oh, you're awake and not dead. A guy. Just a guy. We did beat them up pretty hard. Okay, a small word. No, that was a small word. So, the thing about dungeons in this game is that dungeons are quite a bit longer than we're used to seeing in other East games that I've played it through for this channel anyway. So, the days of me doing a single dungeon in one video are over. At least as far as this game is concerned. So, Karna's environmental thing is to hit things with her knives. Since this is the dungeon that introduces this ability, we're going to be using it a lot. Leave it to me. Leave it to me. But we 
there's always time to gather. Okay, there was a similar insect-infested cave in Mask of the Sun, and that uh, was the uh, next... That was the beginning of the next dungeon area after you did the crater dungeon in uh, Mask of the Sun. However, in Mask of the Sun, the uh, insect zone was more of a pass-through area. Whereas this one, it's a full-blown dungeon with bosses. And I mean that plural. Using Sonic Slider Punch because I expect to use it uh, later in a very difficult fight. Okay, so enemies are more vulnerable to status ailments in this game than you might be used to in uh, other RPGs. So it actually might be good to inflict uh, yeah, death to uh, enchant uh, your weapons with at least some status ability. Yeah? all uh, sparked a new technique. Oh, boy. Oh, this is a puzzle item. There are three of these in this dungeon. And I want to be really careful not to miss any of them. Because that means backtracking, and backtracking is nobody's friend. I do like the dungeon and dungeon environment design in this game. Because I don't really think there's anything uh, worse than a game like this with bad dungeons because those are, in effect, the cornerstone of the gameplay. And now we can cross here. That all is paralyzed, but we can walk that off. Okay, so Blade Barrage is one of the 40 cost skills, which means it's pretty strong. Skills can cost either 10, 20, or 40 uh, SP. There are no, like, 100 SP skills. And I wouldn't really like it if they were considering, if they were considering how many uses it takes to level up a skill in this game. Uh, 
Uh, party? Party? Thank you. And by the way, there's uh, an achievement for finding all of the resource points and opening all the chests. I mean, those are two separate achievements. But the thing about this game is that it lets you know if you've missed a chest in a dungeon or missed a resource point in a dungeon. So, the achievement is easier to get than you might suspect. Okay, we can't get up there quite yet. Okay! You should only cut down two of these. The reason being is that if you cut down the, the one that I didn't, it will actually crush that red chest. And that's just not something you want to happen. Ooh, that's another status prevention accessory. Well, this looks like a room I should save before uh, activating. Boss time! And hey, there's our uh, good old boss theme uh, from uh, previous versions of East 4, Battle Number 58. So this boss is nothing special, its attacks are pretty heavily telegraphed. There's plenty of time to whack him in between. Uh, attacks. However, his uh, goo does inflict the heavy status. However, stunning him is not a problem. Okay, when you reduce him to a certain amount, he is now basically picked the most. He attacks faster, but it's still not an actual problem. However, you can't stun him after this point, so, uh... Just do it, you know how. And it shouldn't be any problem at all. God, that kind of level-up notification reminds me of Kingdom Hearts. And for this, we get the Dwarf Bracelet, the first of an in our of the the first of our environmental doohickeys. So this item, as the description says, shrinks us, allowing us to go through small passages, but it reduces our stats. There are a total of eight artifacts in this game, two of which are uh, optional. And we're just gonna use this thingamabobber. Yeah, it allows us to crawl through these little uh, borrow passages. And we're gonna have to do a lot of that. But we'll pick up with that later, uh, next time on 
East Memories of Salsada. See you then, and goodbye.